Hello, so today's video, we're gonna be going through how you can start turning a standard QuickBooks profit and loss statement into a more dynamic financial model. In this, we'll be going through consolidating your line items. So your profit and loss statement probably looks much longer than what I have here, which can be difficult when you're trying to do a more granular financial model or projections from it. Um, also, you can see we've got our Genius Sheets software up and running to the right. And so at the end of this, we can just quickly show you how you can link the data in a timely fashion so that when you're updating actuals, it makes it much easier. So this is your profit and loss for QuickBooks. I'm get, I started just a little bit pre-filling what, we, what we're going to want this model to look like. So maybe we're going to have price widget one, or let's do widget one, price, number of sales, widget two, same thing. And so this is for you to start, you can pull in your actual, start projecting. I'm just gonna quickly fill these in. There's 20 of this one, double of this one. We'll have this grow by, oops. we'll have this one grow by two. This one grow by four each month. Uh, and then number of sales, let's keep it simple. We'll do this one 100 and this one 20. And then we'll have each one grow by this grow by four. Let's just do this grow by two. Okay, so I'm just gonna pull this across. So this just gives you an idea of, um, oh, what? insert row here and then it's going to be total equals so this is the price times this and so that's how much money you're making from each of these per month and so here's our little nice neat little table now when we want to start doing our so total sales is going to be this one plus this one and then what you can do is you can just roll at these these numbers for the projections you can just pull in your actuals in a kind of timely manner now, when you're doing things like projecting your expenses or COGS, it can get a little bit more granular and a little trickier. So what we can do is, right, we have total sales here, maybe we have a line for COGS, then we're gonna have a line for your SG&A, uh, maybe one for salary, salary expenses, and so these are each gonna be separate line items. Now, if we go back to the QuickBooks p &L, you'll see you have significantly more line items here. An easy way we can map this is we can do some ifs and we're going to put what we call like tags on here. So these up here are going to have the sales tag. These are going to have the cogs tag. SGA for let's say these four and then these are going to be salary. Salary, 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 salary. Let's pull it all the way. Or no, we don't want to pull the totals um, because that'll throw it off. And then, right, this is taxes. Okay, so now our table, what we can do is our table is going to be referencing these values. So when you have lots of these different categories, once you map it the first time, it becomes really easy to automate so that all of your data pulls in each month. So we go back to the model. We're going to do new sum if. So the range is going to be you do the full length of your PL. Right? And we're going to sum if any of those are cogs. And the range for this first one is going to be the October 2021. So we'll pull in, we want to be the same time period. So it started in C9, so we'll start in D9 and we'll go to D38 as well. So 
So you see it's zero for that period. And now if we've done this properly, uh, I'm just gonna lock these. So that when we cross, F two E. Oh, sorry. Oops. This should be. I locked the wrong part of this. This should still be referencing column C. Right, so this was C9, C9. So I put the dollar sign in the wrong place. So we're gonna put the dollar signs there in front of the row and column references. And when we do that, now each month, every line item that you have tagged as cogs, whether it's anywhere in this PL, is gonna be picked up and added to this line item. So we're going to duplicate this formula for SGNA. And now I'm going to change the reference instead of up here. It's going to be down here. And we're going to be summing. And you see it sums all these numbers together. Beautiful. And so once we've summed all of these and we do this all the way down, you start getting the dynamic linking so that when you put in new data into your spreadsheet, it's automatically going to update. And so if we just do a quick check, we'll go into our profit and loss. You see these SGNA, let's just sum them, 608 over here, 608. Beautiful, it's working. And now the way that you can start automating this is you can use Genius Sheets formulas to recreate this profit and loss statement so that all of these, and so we're gonna gs.is, these are our custom formulas that link directly to your QuickBooks general ledger. So this is gonna pull in the sales numbers. And then I'm gonna lock the cells so that I can just copy it over the full. Oh, I just copy it over the full model. And when we do, I'll drag this down. Now you see the numbers are the same, 2116. Now, the beauty of this is each time a month passes, so if we go 1, 1, 2022, 20, all I'm doing is I just copy and paste the formulas and everything's updated. And now when you go into your model, the January numbers, right, if they're still dynamically linking to that spreadsheet, they're going to automatically populate as well in the model. So this is a really easy way to start building these dynamic financial models where the data you have linked to the underlying QuickBooks, but you're still consolidating your categories or groupings so that the P&L output is much clearer. The other really nice thing about what we've built with Genius Sheets is if you, you do this mapping exercise and you the client or someone on your accounting team adds a category to your P&L that you we're unaware of. You just do a quick check. We've added this within our list categories feature, this little button, newly added categories. So if there's any new account that's been added, it's gonna tell you here along with the date. So you can make sure when you go back to the mapping table, oh, okay, I need to add in this mortgage interest home office rate to make sure that I'm capturing everything. So if you have any questions, you know, this is just a very simple walkthrough of how to start setting up your first financial model. We're going to have more in-depth videos coming out of how to build more robust financial models soon. So if you have any questions, send us an email and hope you enjoyed.